church leaders, Christians that I knew, my family, like it was crazy. The amount of people that are like, this is foolish. It's like an intervention. They all came around me and they're like, I never felt that discouraged in my life. Hey everyone, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm back with Abraham. How you doing, Abraham? I'm good, man. Good. Good to we, be here. Uh, thanks. Thanks for coming. And we're starting to do a bit more videos with you. So that's a blessing, man. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a lot to share, a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge. So we like to use that here. Mm -hmm. Like kind of extract a lot of stuff from your yeah. brain. And same from yours. Uh, it's, it's losing a lot of hair up there. Uh, <laughs> That's another topic on, um, who was it, Elijah? Yeah, but and it's a sign of wisdom, man. Sign of wisdom. Yeah, so careful, guys. The bears are coming. Um, today, or in this episode, mm. we're talking about the mission field. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you've got a background of experience in that. Mm -hmm. You've been in Asia, Middle East, and South America. Yep. And you weren't there for a holiday. Like, it's not a two-week no, no. mission field. We're speaking about years of, yeah. of mission work. Yeah. So to get to that, I would like to ask that question because maybe a lot of people have it in, our, in their heart. They're like, I feel like God wants me, God, God wants to use me somewhere else. Yeah. Right? I don't yeah. know if you've heard that. Yeah, I, yeah. I hear that yeah. a lot of times, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes people don't know where, where they can start, right? Yeah. Um, they feel like this is the calling of God. Um, they are praying about it currently. They, they're they waiting for a confirmation. But um, wh where do you feel like is a good start for a person that feels this way? Okay. Obviously, we're not moved by our feelings, mm. but maybe that could be a hint where mm. God is leading that person's heart. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll start off and I'll preface it with the fact that ministry should, is for all. Christians, mm -hmm. right? So when we're talking about ministry, we're talking about the preaching of the gospel and we're talking about the, you know, working in the kingdom of God. That's for everybody, right? But that looks different for every person, right? <clears throat> so where I would start off, if you have a desire and you're like, you know, I really believe God is leading me <clears throat> outside of my country or maybe to a different place in my country, more rural area or <clears throat> to go out and in full-time ministry, go preach the gospel, plant churches, whatever it may be, however that would look. Um, first and foremost, if that desire is in your heart, there are certain steps that you do need to take. And I believe one of the first ones is prayer and fasting. Um, that's a really, really big one. That's something that you and I kind of, we really hit hard in that sense. In our spiritual walk, we felt the burden of God in our hearts and we felt you know, we really believe God wants to send us out, right? But it started with our personal devotion and our study of the scriptures and whatnot. Um, the thing for me when I was younger, I was about 13, 14, I, I believed in my heart. I'm like, I had this groaning, this yearning to go into other places, go to other places and preach the gospel. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe it's just emotion. So I'm just going to pray and I'm going to keep praying and I'm going to keep cultivating this. And if it's of God, then next year it won't just fade away. It will keep growing, mm -hmm. right? Um, so what I did, I invested in the Word of God. I studied the Word of God. I prayed. I fasted. And not only that, I was very invested in the local church. So it's like there are people that they want to go overseas, but they're not really doing anything here, Right. They're not doing anything for their neighbor or the people that are around them. They're not investing in the local church. So if you're not doing that, if you're not already focusing on where you are and ministering where you are, then what makes you think you're going to be any use somewhere else in the world? You so know like I mean? being faithful with the little that God has yeah. given you. Yeah. So yeah. God can entrust something else yeah. for you. Cool. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's something that I I speak to people. I'm like, look, this is not a holiday. And one of the damaging things that tends to happen, it's like those little short-term trips that sometimes for your youth group or, you know, you know, some people do those short-term yeah. short trips for um, like their colleges or whatever. Yeah. They go to Israel and it's a nice little break, but 
I, I do have mixed feelings yeah. about that, but, to be but, honest with you. Because you know what it is? It feels like, let's take, let's take this group of kids. Yeah. Um, they're going to feel emotional and come back and be paint like... A, paint a wall and whatever. Yeah. yeah. Or, it's or a hype. Ha- it's hand a hype. out some food or yeah. something like that. I'm yeah. like, mission mission field is no, much very different to that. harder yeah. than that, much dirtier than that. It's the long mm-hmm. hours. I, oh, man, I remember waking up some days... We used to do like a ministry and pastoral courses uh, for the guys in the village. We'd wake up at early in the morning, start at 9 a.m., finish at 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. And there were long sessions. Yeah. And then we would have dinner together and have a night service together. And after the night service, we would spend time with a lot of the youth. And by the time you get to sleep, you're like, it's like 12, 1 a.m. in the morning. You get up and most likely you're doing the same thing again. Mm-hmm. Or traveling like maybe yeah. eight to twelve hours to go to a remote place to minister to them. Mm-hmm. It's it's different. I, I I'm not sure why people are doing this. Yeah. Where they take people on a two week holiday. One of the, uh, I mean, sorry, yeah. two, two week mission field. Um, <laughs> out of out of the mouth reveals what's in the heart. Oh. Yeah. Sorry about that. Two week mission field yeah. where people feel a bit you know, have that those tingly feelings yeah. and might shed a tear or two. And then they're like, you know what? That was the most amazing time of my life. And I'm like, okay, but... Would you stay they, there for three years? And, yeah. And, 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 those people, yeah. and those people that you left, what are they doing now? Yeah. They're still in the same situation. So you came for two weeks, you entertained them, they entertained you. Yeah. And everyone's, you know, back well, in their life. One of the reasons, I think one of the mindsets behind it, I think there's good intentions, mm-hmm. but remember passion and wisdom are two different things yeah. most of the time. And one goes before the other. It's like they, they have this good intention to expose the people in their church to something beyond their reality. So there's good there in that sense, you know, to go and see that people are living a totally different reality to what you're living and you need to get out of your box. That's one thing, but if that's the only thing, then just go watch a YouTube documentary or something about, you know, the third world nations, like to actually go there often it can do damage to the locals. Like if they have groups of people come in, they hand out some rice and food and, you know, paint a little bit here. And then two weeks later they go, it's like, there's a hype for two weeks and then they're gone and they're stuck in their same Yes. You know, hopelessness. Yeah. Right? Which is why I was, uh, I, um, I've got mixed feelings yeah. about this. Yeah. B- because the idea is that if you want to go there, um, God is sending you to serve them yeah. and to yeah. have a long lasting impact. For example, when Paul started the Corinthian church, he was continuously revisiting them. He yeah, was yeah, continually yeah. teaching them. He was continually guiding them, rebuking and, them. And if he couldn't make it, he'd send teams yeah. to go and to continue to disciple them because you don't leave them, you don't leave them on their own. It's like newborn babes. Yeah. And he had this. He had a, a like a fatherhood a kind of. He was a father figure to them, and so he had this paternal feeling towards them that these are babies who need the milk of God's word and they need discipleship and they need to grow. And without that, they're not going to. Mm. And so it's a, it's an investment, right? So you're investing time, you're investing energy, and you're sacrificing a major portion of your life to that call. And for some people, like, you know, it's a reality. For some people, it's a certain season that God calls them for a few years to go do this and then come back and then do something different. And the ministry looks different. Like for the Apostle Paul, his ministry looked different from season to season, right? Sometimes God called him back to Jerusalem. Sometimes God called him to Antioch, whatever. He moved around. Um, Whereas for, let's say, the Apostle James, he stayed in Jerusalem. His whole life, pretty much. And so ministry will look different to each person. There are yeah. different seasons in it. And the ultimate thing is, are you being faithful to where God is leading you? Mm-hmm. So let's say God has definitely 100% called you to the mission field that is outside of your country, outside of your 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 reality here. Like let's say you're in Australia or America or a Western country and God's saying, I'm calling you to the third world nations. or I'm calling you to this specific nation. This is on your heart. Mm. What are the steps that you need to take in order to to get there? 
you know what are the steps so for you if i were to ask you you have some um experience in taiwan what were the steps you took to get to taiwan uh, to be honest with you we actually had a bit of a backlash right because mm. a lot of people said um you have a family you've got a job you yeah. know you, you you've got a career obviously set up for you because when i was here mm. even though I, i was almost like full-time ministry but at the same time i was juggling work and ministry right but the, so as you were speaking earlier it's like you know people don't do nothing and they expect to be sent somewhere you know mm. like we were busy uh but then when when god made that clear to us and we wanted to leave a lot of people did come and say uh what about your finances what yeah. about your family you've got kids you're going to a culture you don't speak the language um you don't know what's going to happen to you if something happens to you you can't give us a call you you're not in australia the rules are different and yeah. it felt like it was It's the obstacle. devil's yeah, yeah it, was, it was like the devil's last try yeah, to yeah. say stay where you are stay comfortable trying to put that fear in us mm. but then to us it's like the first thing was okay god called us the first thing we can do is obey so how did you know god called you though everything was falling into place yeah we already had that desire for mm. me and my wife Uh, to do work outside there's of number Australia. one if you and your wife yeah. are, are agreeing here then yeah that's a big yeah, sign, yeah. Uh, you don't want to go through a divorce just to go on the mission field <laughs> <laughs> um we've had experiences in church history with that uh, where some yeah. men actually left their wives to go and do that yeah. and that's it so so th there was that strong desire we were reading in the word we we saw how the disciples were moving from one place to another mm. being faithful to the um to the guiding Where, where God was leading them to. And we we always had that in our hearts. So, and, and we were with an organization, a, a mission organization for eight years. Yeah. Prior. Like we were involved with them for a very long time. But we felt like it's time for us to be in the mission field. Mm -hmm. When we went there, we never sat down and thought about our finances. Yeah. We never thought about our security. Uh, we never thought about um, what we're missing in Australia, in the mm. Western world. Like everything was put to the side and we were just trusting in God. Yeah, I, I think that's something very important for people who have um, the mission field in their heart is they always think about the the flight is going to cost me this much. The accommodation is going to cost me this much. Yeah, um, The food is going to cost me that much. So let me build that saving to be able to afford a mission field yeah that's not how a mission field is when jesus sends his disciples when he first called them in the gospel of, of, of matthew in chapter 10 when he sends yeah, yeah. them out don't even he, take <laughs> he says don't don't take a bag of silver and gold with you right wherever you go yeah there's going to be provision there's going to be people there that going to be god's going to soften their heart mm -hmm. to be a blessing to you yeah. and that's what happened to us in taiwan i remember we went there um uh, with the ministry that we were part of they provided a place for us yeah and they provided um some some money for our expenses but then we started to meet people there that would start to send boxes of clothes and food almost daily wow. when we were there to our house. We had even no idea. We don't speak the language. We're like, do you know who sent it? The guy's like, can't even speak to us. <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I just deliver the package. And we got so much. I remember we, the the clothes started to pile up yeah. in, in our bedroom. <laughs> and I was like to my wife, I said, oh, that's a great opportunity. Let's pack everything up, go to the village yeah. and give it all. And, and that was a blessing. Like it, it felt like it, it was God saying, not audibly, I didn't hear God, but it felt like God saying that you were obedient to me. And I'll take care of everything. I'll take care of it. And I'm going to be like, I'm going to overflow yeah. when it comes to that blessing. It's, it's Matthew 6 in action. Yeah. You know, you're, you're seeking the kingdom of kingdom. God and everything else he's adding. Yeah. He's taking care of it. Yeah. And, and you know what? When we were in the mission field, everything was going right. Mm. Like everything was going right. 
we share the gospel to people they come into Christ we we minister in this church and we see like a revival in the in the local church yeah. um we see the hearts of people changing we see God moving in miraculous ways yeah um it's it's not like the western culture here where you go sit sing three songs hear a half an hour message and go home no church t to them church was much more than a one hour service like an actual spiritual meal like a full banquet it <laughs> was man it they yeah. would spend a whole sunday together yeah uh, and some places i've met some people that they don't have anything on sunday and i'm like oh so you don't go to church they're like dude Monday to Saturday is our church. We meet every day right. together. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna tell Sunday us, is actually a day off. <laughs> it's a day off, and and that kind of changed my whole perspective yeah. on a lot of things because you know, like you live in a Western world and you think this is how things are, yeah. but then when you go somewhere else and you're like, no, these guys are on fire. Mm -hmm. These guys are like waking up every day five four a.m. in the morning, and they're praying, they're worshiping yeah. God before they head out to their work and that's something that we're really missing here mm -hmm. we're very like we that, miss that sounds very early church new testament book of acts you know you, you know what um and, and this might be very hard to swallow to a lot of people but i i gotta be honest this is what i've experienced this is what i saw god doing i'm not gonna hide it for the sake of other beliefs like some christians don't believe in in spiritual gifts some people yeah. don't believe in miracles today so i'm not gonna hide god's work just because someone doesn't believe in it yeah but i'm telling you now the first six weeks i still remember it until this day i remember um i used to speak to a missionary he says i'll keep a journal write things down like all these things and you know when the time comes and god sends you back you can always mention stories yeah. to, to your family, to your church, and so, so on. So I sit down, I'm, I'm like remembering all the things that God did mm. in the first six weeks. And just God led me saying, if if you're going to write this, then that's the highlight of your ministry. But if you're going to put this away, the pen and paper, this is going to be your everyday experience with mm. me. And I'm telling you now. We were experiencing healing. We were experiencing deliverance. We were experiencing repentance. People mm. coming to Christ. People receiving the gospel. People, people's life being changed dramatically. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. We we had a baptism. We did it in the middle of the winter, in the river. I'm telling you, I was shaking. The two boys that we were baptizing, they were shaking too. Like it was so cold. It was like an ice bath. <laughs> We get in, which is good for you. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> we get in. We had a taxi driver yeah. take us there. Okay, we get in, and the taxi driver was listening to us. We're talking about Christianity and so on, and we we started to talk to him, and we get in, and before we start to baptize the two boys, he's like, "Can I be baptized too?" Wow, <laughs> and we're like, "You're a Buddhist. You need to become a Christian first. He's like, "Yeah, I accept Jesus." Whatever you guys were telling me, I accept it. I want to be baptized too. That to yeah, me is amazing. crazy. And yeah. I'm telling you, that is one of many, 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 many stories mm. that we saw God doing on the mission field. Now, you might think to yourself, well, I haven't seen none of that. I, I can't answer for you. But I can answer for my life that I've been walking obedient with the Lord and he's taken me to places. I've been to, to places in Africa. I even came where you were in mm -hmm. South America for five weeks. We were there for me and the family before we left to Taiwan. I've been to so many places, man. It, it's just that obedience. Yeah. If, if you are obedient, if you totally surrender to God, then you will see God's hand working. Yeah. But then if you're going to sit here and think, well, my security is my finances. My security is I've got a house that's locked and it can protect me from a thief. My security is I live in a safe country. My security is this. My security is that. How do you expect God to work yeah. in your life? I'm not saying go and test God. Please, by all means. But then you have to remind yourself that when God sends you out in faith, that faith will start to demonstrate itself. Yeah. You'll start to see your faith manifest god will start to provide for you mm. because if god called you guess who's going to provide for you 
God. That's it, yeah. If God's going to call you to go to a country that is not safe, guess who's going to protect you? God. Because he's taking you to a place where you are very vulnerable. Mm. And he's calling you to stand on water. Yeah, yeah. See, with Peter, he stood on water, but he was with Jesus. The boat seemed to be the most safe option for mm. him. But then being with Jesus was the most safest place to until, be in. Until he saw it. Until his <laughs> doubts. So that's why I encourage you, if you're preparing for a mission field, yeah. if that's in your heart, you feel like God is leading you to the mission field and you don't know where to start, faith and obedience is the most important things. Because I've got to be honest with you, you can be as prepared as you want to be, mm. right? You could be as prepared as you want to be. Like you could save up and say, well, that's going to last me for a year. And when mm. you're in the mission field, whatever you've saved for a year could be gone all in a month. Mm. What are you going to do after that? Are you going to go home and disobey God? Or would you still be faithful and say, God, I'm here to serve you. You've called me to be in this place. I'm going to trust that you're going to provide for yeah. me. It's actually interesting. One of the things, be prepared for the backlash as well. Like when you're starting to go out and you're preparing, you're like, God's calling me to this place and that's what I'm preparing for. And so your plans to, you know, set up and establish your life and your house and your home and kids or marriage or whatever, they will get put on the back burner on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm just going to follow God and trust him with yeah. everything else. Prepare for the backlash with everyone else who lives a different reality to that. You, so, you know, yeah. sorry to no, cut no, you no. off, but this was what was so discouraging is the backlash was coming from my Christian that's, brothers and sisters. That's exactly where I was going, yeah. And you know what? They would make you look like you're the, the a bad father, a bad mother. Mm -hmm. Or they, just a foolish young kid. Yeah, a foolish yeah. young kid. They're like, wait, so your kids are need to go to school. How are they going to get educated? Mm -hmm. If they come back, they're going to be behind everybody else, every other kid. To be honest with you, we're back in Australia and my kids are doing amazing in, in their school. Mm. Why? It's because we trust in God. Yeah. It, yeah. If you think from a, say, let's say a logical perspective, but it's a earthly wisdom mm. in the sense where, hey, this doesn't work. This will get you backward financially yeah, yeah, yeah. with your career, with your kids, with your family. Then obviously everyone's going to back off. Yeah. But then if the Lord is saying, okay, who's going to go for us? And you're like Isaiah saying, God, here, here I, I am. am. Yeah. I'm going to go. If everybody else rejects it, I'm going to do it. What, why do you think there is a great reward for those who do this kind of work? Mm. Jesus said, he says, anyone who leaves their father, mother, land, uh, family, business, everything, they're going to receive a hundredfold. Yeah. What, why do you think the reward is so great? Because many Sadly, Christians, many Christians won't take that step of faith. Yeah. They would rather worship God on Sunday in their local church, open up their Bible every day in the comfort of their home, on their couch, than take that step of faith. Yeah. That's called comfort. Mm -hmm. And for those who want to go into the mission field and they want to continue being comfortable, or bring that comfort from where they are into the mission field. Yeah, no, that's, that's that's a big failure. That's also very dangerous to the people that you're going to minister to as well, because you minister to them and they see your level level of comfort, and then that's where this whole prosperity gospel thing can come into it. And they're like, "Oh, well, if I accept Jesus, I'll get what you have," kind of thing. Yeah, that's a dangerous place to be and a dangerous way to minister as well. Um, Ultimately, you're preaching the gospel. But coming back as well to what you were saying about that backlash thing, because I remember um, when I went on my first six months, I was doing Indonesia and I was doing some Asia. And then I had come back and I had plans to go back. For was it Philippines as well? Philippines? No. Did you Fili no, oh, no, okay. I did um, Indonesia and I did East Timor. Oh, yeah, um, East, East Timor, Timor Indonesia. Oh, yeah. And then I did six months spout and I came back to Australia to you know, work a bit and then save up a bit more and go back. And I had come back and I went back to work for a bit to save up some money. And every, I was, how old was I? I would have been about 21, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, I was finishing up my uni and I was preparing to go back again. And then 
the backlash started. Everyone's like, oh, did you get it out of your system? You know, you went, mm, you know, ouch. you know, you were like, yeah. all right, so now you're back. Are you back for good? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm going back. Church leaders, Christians that I knew, my family, like it was crazy. The amount of people that are like, this is foolish. It's like an intervention. Mm -hmm. They all came around me and they're like, I never felt that discouraged in my life. Yeah. I was so, so, so discouraged. And I went home that night and I couldn't even pray. I was that discouraged. I just lay down and I, I looked at it and I'm like, God, I don't know what to say here. I'm just going to lay down yeah. and go to sleep. I went to bed. I was so upset. Three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. I just get up. Yeah. Right. And I get up so quickly and the verse Genesis 15 one comes to my head. Okay. That's why I hear. Yeah. And then I, I wasn't that good with, I'm not good with memorization that one. <laughs> and yeah. so I opened up my Bible, Genesis 15 one. And it said, here's, I'm going to read it. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Wow. Amen. And that was the, that was the one thing that took away every doubt. Didn't matter what anyone else said. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter what any other obstacle or anything came, any words or any antagonism came. Didn't matter. That was my assurance. It was like God spoke to me directly, even using my name. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it spoke to me directly. You don't need to worry. Don't worry about what anyone else is saying. Just keep going, keep following. And because I had networked a lot with people who were in, in Asia and with churches and with ministries, and they wanted me to go do a lot of teaching for their pastors. And the thing is, they have so much passion. They don't have a, the knowledge, right? So this is one of the things you were doing in Taiwan as well. Like these men have so much faith. They just need the biblical clarity. Their yes. doctrine. Yeah. It, it's opposite here in, yeah, yeah. in the Western world. Here we have good doctrine. We don't have the faith. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's wild. So that was one of the major things I was doing in Asia and in um, Indonesia. And we're working with a lot of the younger kids and with the, with the leaders and the pastors. And we're like, look, God is calling you guys. Let's get your doctrines right. And you're going to see amazing things because you have the faith to go with. Mm -hmm. Like your faith is amazing. You're putting me to show, mm -hmm. you know, and that first year, I remember that first year was more about God just refining me and getting rid of that mindset of the finance things and, and whatnot. And um, I remember I had moved on from Asia and I was going into the Middle East. So I was in Lebanon and Lebanon was a bit different. There was, it was like Asia, there was, you probably know, this, we talk, there was so much production. It was like bearing fruit like crazy. Mm. Yeah. I go into Middle East and it's a bit different. Like there's more resistance mm -hmm. and the Arab people are more antagonistic and and that's their their and culture. The culture is very the culture, yeah. It's got a stronghold. Yeah. Yeah. And so at that point I was like, all right, this is a different reality, so I've got to adjust here. Um so yeah, like in Lebanon they're not as hospitable and um so there's a lot more resistance and even though there were a lot of things happening, like with the Syrian refugees and um, we were doing a lot of work, there were more obstacles that had to be faced. And it's a, it's a good, it's a good thing to see the two dynamics. You see fruit bearing fruit and harvest in, you know, certain places and in other places there's more resistance. Um, and so one of the obstacles as well were certain financial stuff that I was going through because of that, um, the inhospitable nature of the people there. So I had one mission base that was really helping me. They set me up. They had an accommodation for me. And so they were doing amazing things and I worked with them. Um, but also financially, it will, you know, my account would come to pretty much zero yeah. at times. And then I'm like, you know what, God doesn't matter. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. And so someone would give me a call from Australia and be like, you know, someone just felt in their heart that God wanted to wow. give a thousand dollars to you wow. and i'm like all right well that's how god was providing just literally it was like god was providing at the right time in the right places and so from there i was like i don't need to worry about this side of things i don't need to worry about the the or be anxious about what i'm going to eat or what i'm going to wear or you know that's god's those are god's issues if i'm faithful to 
to the work, mm -hmm. God will be faithful with the rest. Amen. And so um, that's one of the things that if you're looking to be a missionary and to go out, don't let the financial aspect of it drive, you know, how you're going to minister. Just be faithful and minister and God will handle the rest. He's a pro at this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's very important. Um, walking in faith and yeah. having that obedience to God's calling in your life is very important. Yeah. And, and that's that would be our encouragement to you. It's, it's, it's not a business. Ministry is different than a business. Yeah. Uh, ministry requires faith. It requires following God. And sometimes you feel like you might not be in the right place. Sometimes you might think um, things around you are not working mm -hmm. as you would hope them to be. But it's about obedience. As yeah. long as you're doing the will of God where you are, yeah. God, God's going to fulfill his, his will there. I yeah. think that's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, God bless you and take care. Enjoy bless your you time. Guys. Bye.